Hi YouTube, hope you are doing well. Um, I'm going to do another edition of sitting here drinking wine, telling you a story. So, not that I've done this before with the wine, but I have told stories. Anyway, let's do that. Uh, so, a lot of people have asked me in the past, how on earth did a ginger, skinny, not so talented arm wrestler at the time um, get to meet the greatest arm wrestler of all time, John Brissink. And how did I become buddies with him? Did I, did I buy friendship? Did I, uh, did I just get lucky? What happened? How on earth did it all come to be that I met John? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight, uh, in this little video. And, um, hopefully by the time I finish my video, my Uber Eats order will arrive and we can have dinner to go with the wine. Anyway, so it all began eight years ago when I decided to try to make arm wrestling a career and I went all in on YouTube and all in on social media. Um, not making anything, but in all my spare time, I, uh, I dedicated everything I could to creating content around the space of arm wrestling and following my journey. Now in the process of doing that, if you're, if you've been friends with me or if you've watched me in the arm wrestling world for a long time, you'll, you will be able to remember back to years where I was making a lot of noise on Facebook, always talking about arm wrestling, always adding comments to forums. And, um, just generally I was in every conversation as an observer, um, much like a lot of people are people. I, I think of names like Timmy Turner. Um, I think of names like Ronan. Uh, I was like that. I was just always in the conversation. Hey, Timmy. Hey, Ronan. Thanks for being here. No doubt you'll comment on this video too. Um, but I was commenting on everything. I was always involved in the conversation. And uh, it, the year was 2018. Oh, gee, hang on. Was it 2017? Maybe. I'm not sure. It was one of those two. You guys let me know. Um, it was one of those years. I'm going to run with 2018. And it was... No. Okay. <laughs> okay. It was definitely 2017. Because it was Christmas 2017. And I was just doing what you do on Christmas Day. I was just relaxing, um, hanging out with the kids. And I was doing some, actually, I was doing some arm wrestling training um, when my phone rang. And the person who popped up on my screen was someone that really, it surprised me. I was genuinely nervous to answer the phone. And I was like, oh my goodness. This person's call is this person really calling me? What? Why is this person calling me? And it um it had me truly flustered. I was in a moment of kind of fanboy situation. Um, as a, obviously I'm a big fan of the arm wrestling world, and the person calling me was none other than Travis Bajan. Now, obviously Travis Bajan, probably the biggest personality in the sport um, historically. Um, super talented guy, multiple world champion, very respected everywhere and just a general badass. Anyway, so I answer the phone and it's Travis and I try to sound normal and say, Hey man, what's going on? Merry Christmas, all that sort of stuff. And Travis says something to the effect of, Hey man, it's Travis Bajan here. Look, I, I'm just going to get straight to the point. I'm having a tournament in Arizona in June of 2018 and I want you to help me promote that event. And so when he said that to me, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I can help promote it. And I asked him the question, why on earth, why on earth are you offering or asking me to do this? Because not only was he asking me to promote it, he was offering to pay for my travel to Arizona from uh, Australia, which was a big deal. I've never had anything like this at this point in time. I've never, um, never had a sponsorship at this point in time. I've never had anything. I'm just pushing hard. Uh, to grow a brand. And so Travis was the first person that offered to sponsor me anything in the world of arm wrestling. And it was a significant sponsorship. It was travel from Australia to Arizona, um, accommodation whilst I was there, and he was going to pay me to do it. Uh, so naturally, it was a massive yes. I dropped everything. Uh, I, I was working at the time, and I, I, um, I dropped everything to be able to make that trip. Now, as the trip was approaching, Travis called me and said, look, we need to sort out where you're going to stay. Where do you want to stay with an arm wrestler uh, in the local area? Do you want to stay at the, the casino where we're going to be at for the event? 
um, you got a few options. And he rattled off a bunch of names that were um, the possibilities of who I could stay with and went through a whole list. There was about 10 people. And then jokingly, right at the end, he said, man, even, even John Brzezank lives 45 minutes down the road. You could, you could stay with him. And then he quickly took that back and said, no, I'm just kidding. You can't stay with the goat. Um, but that comment from Travis stuck in my mind. And uh, we were wor working out what we were going to do. I, was I, I think I said, I'll stay at the casino. And, um, but as time went by, it, that seed that Travis planted, that, that comment he made that John lived uh, 45 minutes away from the venue, um, uh, it, it's, it stayed with me. And I thought, screw it, I'm gonna message John. Now at this point in time, I'd never spoken to John in my life. I'd never had any communications with him at all. Um, had only been a fan and onlooker from where I was. And, um, so I, I wrote this big, long message to John, um, being very polite, being very courteous, being very respectful of his time, not expecting him to even read it, let alone respond. Um, and in that message, I basically just outlined what I was doing, why I was going to be in Arizona, helping Travis to promote this event. And, um, happened to mention that I was looking for a place to stay. Um, I didn't ask to stay at John's. I just mentioned, oh yeah, and I'm looking for a place to stay kind of thing. So a little slide that one in. Um, it was about a week and a half later that John responded with, um, sounds great. You're more than welcome to come stay at my place. Something to that effect. And I, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Um, and I was pinching myself thinking, hang on, hang on, what? I'm going to go and stay with John for a sec. Um, Anyway, we talked back and forth for a bit, organized the logistics of it, and sure enough, staying at John's, and staying at John's for an entire week. Um, now, at this point in time, my YouTube channel was was at about three or 4,000 uh, subscribers, and it was um, not making any money. It was making a couple of dollars every month. And it um, really hadn't taken off in any way, shape, or form yet. So, my hope... Uh, in my mind, I was like, man, this could be a game changer. If I get one interview with John Brzezank, just one, it could uh, totally change my, my YouTube channel to have a video with John. Because John had been retired from the sport. He hadn't pulled since 2015, and he hadn't been seen in any public comments since 2015 either. So this was, I thought, wow, I could get, get an interview with John, and we, we could get the update on John. Is he retired? What's he doing? All that sort of stuff. So the date came, I flew to Arizona and, um, John picked me up from the airport and I tried my best to act normal and not be a fan. I think I did an all right job of it, but John was a very, very welcome host. And, uh, we got to John's place and he straight away offered me a beer and we jumped in the pool and, and, and drank six beers over the afternoon and soaked up the Arizona sun. And, and I listened to John tell stories of arm wrestling and, there, there are photos from that moment where I literally just can't believe. It. I remember the emotions and the feeling of that being like, "Wow, mm. I'm here in the USA on an all expenses paid trip, staying at John Brzezak's place." It was truly humbling. Um, a couple of days went by, and I thought, "I'm going to ask John if he'll do this interview," and uh, and I waited for the moment to ask him, and I finally hit him up. Hey, John, would you be up for doing an interview with me just for my YouTube channel? And he said, look, uh, to be honest, no, not interested in doing an interview. Uh, I'm retired from the sport of arm wrestling. I, I don't have anything to say to the world of arm wrestling. And to be honest, I've been interviewed that many times. It's always the same questions. I just don't want to do it. And, um, naturally I respected that and it was all good. And, um, and we didn't plan or schedule an interview. Um, it was the final day that I was at John's place. I'd competed in Travis's tournament. Um, I'd done my, my role there in helping him market that tournament. And as part of my YouTube channel, I was just filming a wrap up of that tournament. And, um, this, we were back at John's place. I was literally leaving the next morning and sitting on John's couch out by the pool. I set my camera up, um, set my camera up to face myself. And John happened to sit on the opposing couch behind the camera and just watched me film this kind of 10 minute wrap up of the tournament. And at this stage, John knew nothing about my YouTube channel. He didn't know why, why I had one, what I was doing with it, what my goal was or anything. And, um, after rattling off this story, John said to me, 
what on earth are you, what are you doing with this YouTube channel? Like, you did that really naturally and you, you, you didn't seem to struggle, you weren't lost for words, you weren't nervous, you, what's, what's the story? And, um, so my ears straight away pricked up as, well, this is an opportunity to tell John what I'm, what my goal is. And I shared with John my goal being not only to become an elite arm wrestler myself, but to, to really be a, uh, significant, um, influence in facilitating the growth of the sport and had the goal of being able to get as many people as possible to be able to call arm wrestling a career in a financial sense. And I outlined how content on YouTube was going to be the forefront of that for me. Um, and we did, we, we talked about that over about six hours and, uh, and six beers or eight beers. And by the end of that conversation, John said to me, All right, I'm in. And what he meant by with the I'm in is John uh, took up a role with me uh, hosting a weekly podcast uh, via YouTube, which you'll all remember. You can all go back and have a look at it. It was a great time. It was an amazing uh, period of time on YouTube where John and I commented on whatever was going on in the sport that week. And uh, it was amazing. It, it was such a cool thing to have the support of John there. And it was such a good thing for the arm wrestling world because it... it Everyone hadn't seen John in so long and we were, everyone was so excited that the channel blew up, the content blew up, the subscribers came in and the channel started earning uh, decent money for the first time. Now, one thing I wanted to share with you all about John is uh, that he truly is a generous man. Um, John has never let me pay him a cent. Uh, every time I've tried, he says, no, just reinvest it, reinvest it into the sport. And um, he's been very humble in that respect. Uh, he and his wife, Renee, have been amazingly uh, generous in their, in their hospitality to me, towards me. Stayed in their home. They've fed me amazing food. They've taken me amazing places. They've shown me the countryside. And Arizona has become probably geographically my favorite place on earth um, after seeing some of the things that they've shown me. And uh, it, it's, it's truly ended up being something that was um, amazing. Um, going on from there, uh, formed an amazing friend, friendship and bond with John. John was in my corner at the WAL 504, uh, my debut against Alan Guerra. And I can't speak highly enough of how much that impacted my self-belief. Uh, having John in my corner then was a huge deal. Um, it was an absolutely huge deal. And uh, fast forward to today, um, I'm getting married in... Um, what, like a hundred days or something from now. And, uh, John's invited, John and Renee are invited to the wedding and they'll be here if coronavirus allows it. Oh my goodness. But, um, so that's kind of where it's at. Um, so that is being the story and evolution of how I came to know John and Travis Bajan. I can't not say thank you to you because Travis will remind me if I don't that, uh, that I owe him a lot because without Travis <laughs> inviting me to Arizona and paying for that travel, who knows? Maybe I'm still just that uh, annoying redhead from Australia who keeps uh, hassling everyone on social media. And uh, But anyway, sliding doors. Um, that was the sliding door moment that led. So thank you, Travis, uh, for initiating that. But um, yeah. There you go. You've got it now, YouTube. So uh, if you ever want to know why I met John or if you ever hear someone asking how on earth did that ginger end up being buddies with John, flick on this link. But um, it is a pretty cool story. It is uh, something that I'm very grateful for. And, and it's not only John and Travis, but the whole arm wrestling world has been like this um, for me. Since putting a lot of effort into the YouTube channel and, and the mission of trying to grow the sport and help facilitate a career opportunities for athletes and organizers and promoters and referees. Um, many doors have opened and there's been a, a many, uh, a long list of many people that have been very supportive and generous towards me. So, um, yeah, that's it. Uber Eats is not here. My wine is not empty. Um, going to go and watch some, some Netflix in a minute. And, um, yeah, there you go. All right, YouTube. I'm going to leave it there. Oh. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what I'm saying now. All right, guys. See you.